when they did theater of pain you know all of them with the devil stuff and you know so it, it, all all of that came from from nicky and that was his true genius i think as a not necessarily as a musician and songwriter but as a kind of visionary of what this scene could become absolutely and when you saw them on stage in those days he to me you couldn't take your eyes off him i remember the first time i saw them live in some little place and at one point he just stood there at the front of the stage not even touching the guitar just preening and he was magnetic he just mm. looked otherworldly yeah um and i think i think, I think it's amazing I, to think they were living those lifestyles because these guys were nicky and tommy i would say were what i would call genetic celebrities yeah. in that their genes were just sensational you could see them i remember them turning up in london once and this was shortly after the matthew trip thing when nicky six hated me right and uh jeff barton who's the editor of kerrang said oh do you want to go and interview motley crew <laughs> like, oh, all right okay because they're going over to ray palmer's studio ray was a photographer and ray had a studio in labrook grove i think it was of course that he, he shared did. with tony mottram and uh was which wasn't at all sleazy <laughs> can we just say it wasn't at all sleazy no, there was nothing like that going on and and the crew went over there and this is here's the great thing they turned up in four separate limousines <laughs> they, they, they each took up about three parking meters and there were these poor bastards from the record company outside running up and down the parking meters <laughs> desperately shoving change into them while the rock motley crew staggered out and they'd just come back from sort of japan or something like that you know it was like these guys were at the on a record company treadmill by this point i think um dr feelgood had either just come out or was just about to come out that was their they, big you know, that was their first number one was a, think, they, they America, were just yeah. going to become more than just a sort of a, an la but they were going to become global superstars at this point and they come trooping it they're all bored you know <laughs> vince is bored and tommy's bored but you looked at these and ray ray's studio was just this kind of you know typical photographer's studio it's an empty sort of a warehousey type space but what it had was it had this sort of set of stairs at the back and it had a kind of mezzanine only small with a little kind of wooden barrier around it but up there were a couple of sofas and you could just sit up there and watch what was going on and so we decided we'd do the interview in, in twos. So right. we'd do like two would have their photographs done while I interviewed two of them. And then they'd swap around, you know. And Nicky and Tommy came up. No, no Nicky and... Nicky might have done it with Vince, I think. or And then and then Mick did it with, with Tommy. And the cleared... Like, Vince and Mick looked wrecked. You know, they'd just been to Japan. They fucking... <laughs> Vince was moaning about that Russia festival. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I was got, there. The, the Moscow the, Music the Mos Peace Festival. He, he goes, he goes uh, do you know how far Moscow is, man? It's fucking far. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was so funny he was really funny about it because it was a big i mean i'm sure you'll tell this it's a big argument over who was going to be top of the bill wasn't there? it ended up with their manager doc mcgee being fired yeah ah, oh, is that what doc yeah was okay. yeah i mean I, 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 sorry um, that, doc. doc and i have been doing some work recently on a uh, on doc's memoir um i cannot reveal too much uh, possibly <laughs> but you a can reveal episode. he was fired by motley crew uh but he was yeah. but he also was the guy that d discovered motley crew yeah uh, um and he told me he said uh in the early days of crew tommy and mick would share a room he said and um after a while he said we debated whether to take one of the beds out because mick was never allowed in his bed <laughs> because tommy would always force him to sleep in the closet <laughs> Mick. because mick mick's thing was booze yeah so mick was always drunk tommy was always the opposite he was always high as a kite yeah, and yeah. crazy and smashing the place up so one a couple of times mick took to hiding in the closet before tommy because mick would be boozed up and go to bed and then tommy would come in four hours later smash the joint up bring women and guys, other guys in so mick took to hiding in the closet <laughs> so then tommy insisted right okay dude well that's where you sleep from <laughs> yeah. now on and they did a whole european tour where oh, mick had to sleep in the so closet this is the reason why mick looks like absolute crap when he turns on <laughs> and and then you know vince does because he's probably shagged 57 of course he on has the way well, over just on the way over yeah, yeah just so he's bored and he but nikki and tommy i mean they look like 
gods, you know, and it transpires at this point, they were both on heroin, you know, right, right. but they looked like, I mean, they were big and Nicky was muscly, you know, yeah. he was a big, and at, at one point he turns around to me and he goes, you wrote a shitty thing about me, man. And I, th- I honestly thought he was going to hit me at that point. He was like very, very well. Yeah, I'd have hit him. So I, he, I'd have he hit, should have 